Hello everybody, welcome to our service today. It is lovely to have you with us. A happy Valentine's Day as well. And we have a Valentine's Day theme throughout our service. Sue Ives is going to be looking at our a familiar and very famous passage, that wonderful description of love in 1 Corinthians 13. Also aware though that Valentine's Day can be a difficult one for many different reasons. And so as we hold these perhaps different feelings uh, as well, we hold them in the presence of God's love. Thank you to Fol and Lulu for the reading uh, a little bit later on. Uh, and a reminder about Zoom coffee at 10.30 today. I'll be giving some more notices a little bit later on. One definitely sad thing is that Mark and Judith Jeffrey, uh, who've been so much uh, wonderful servants of our church, church and churches in different ways, uh, they're sadly uh, leaving us. Uh, good, sad news for us, wonderful news for Derbyshire. Uh, and we're going to be having an interview a little bit later on as well with them, finding out uh, a little bit about their journey and where they're going to be going to, and something about where God is leading and where they see God working at the moment as well. Let's take a moment to remember God's presence with us today. He's with us wherever we are by his spirit. Let's come expectant to meet with him. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us worship God. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn. Love divine, all loves excelling.
as we are mindful and perhaps have a sense of God's love, we also become aware of the ways in which we have fallen short of that. So now let's come to a time of confession, before, bringing before God those areas where we have fallen short. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. And may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let's say together the living God's love prayer. Living God, draw us deeper into your love. Jesus, our Lord, send us to care and serve. Holy Spirit, make us heralds of good news. Stir us strengthen us, teach and inspire us to live your love with generosity and joy, imagination and courage, for the sake of your world and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Time for our interview with Mark and Judith and then our reading and reflection. So Mark and Judith, it is uh, lovely to spend time. Thank you for uh, spending some time out of all your packing to uh, to join us and to be part of, of this interview. Uh, can you tell people where you're uh, going to? It's a really sad thing, but you're, you're heading off uh, and uh, what some of the time frames are. Yeah, we're, we're heading north to Derbyshire and we've uh, bought a house in Bakewell, which some of you may know. Mm -hmm. And that is about um, 40 minutes from our daughter who is going to be living in Markle. So it's the main reason for us moving. Yeah, lovely. Mm -hmm. And when are you heading, uh, when are you heading off? Uh, Tuesday, the 16th. Right. So Very then, soon. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to miss you so much. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know whether you've had a chance to sort of just reflect on your time here. And, you know, you've, how long have you lived in... Pavenham and being part, perhaps being part of um, I think it's about 14 and a half years. Yeah. So, yeah, quite yeah. a while. Quite a while. Quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and how, how do you think God's moved over that time, maybe in your own lives, uh, but also perhaps in the life of the village, life of the church or the churches as well that you've been part of? Hmm. Well, I, I think that what I've seen is that when we first came to the church, it seemed like a few dotted people here and there. But um, as we leave, we see it very much a community. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that, actually. I think since we've been in the church, which is probably about 10 years now, or maybe a little more, mm. I think the church, had, even just through simple things like having coffee after church, and then the development of home groups um, and then some of the newer services with different forms of worship and things. I think people have really gelled together. And I think, um, yeah, I think it's been about relationships, really. I think relationships have really 
uh, be, been a blessing to us and, and hopefully to, to people in the church as well because we've, we've, we've sort of knitted together more, we've done things together, we've shared together more. Yeah. How have you seen those relationships uh, developing over, let's say, the last year, obviously, through the, the COVID period? Um, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, we're very encouraged to see how many people um, join in on the Zoom meetings. Um, yes. Certainly. Yeah. And it's, um, I mean, some of the um, sort of the older people in the church, even older than us, um, <laughs> I know they keep in touch via something called the bulletin every week mm. and uh, that that largely I think came out of the Tuesday home group which we're not part of but it, it's been good to be able to read those bulletins and I've been able to contribute once or twice and there's a real sense of fellowship I think among people even though people are not able to to physically meet very much so there's a sense of fellowship and and again that, that's just really lovely lovely to see and phoning round and uh, and, and yeah, all sorts yeah. of things like that. Yeah. So I was, able, for example, I was able to to make really good friends with Bill, and uh, yes. we've lost Bill recently, which was really sad. But I was able to spend a bit of time with him over the summer, and not just phoning, but when we were able to go in gardens, I had a lovely afternoon with Bill, just chatting in the garden, and that's a memory. Our treasure, and I knew Bill before, but through lockdown, through phone calls, and and uh, and so on, it, it it was just a chance to deepen that that friendship. Mm, yeah, I think that there have been chances to to deepen things actually, even though it may seem that we're quite, you know, it's a, it's a lot more difficult, isn't it, as as well. Mm. Um, but that's right. May I ask a question that you may not uh, quite know how to how to answer, but maybe if you're thinking about what. How God might lead, let's say, Pavenham Church or, you know, and the group of churches over the next few years. What do, what do you think might happen? <laughs> Not that we're all kind of totally <laughs> prophetic, but, but I just want to just wonder what your thoughts might be. I think that's quite, quite hard. I mean, the one thing I would say is that, I mean, Judith and I have um, been involved in introducing quite a lot of change in ourselves through new music and, and wacky things in the service like mm. puppets and, and whatever mm. and I think one thing that is really um, we've noticed is how encouraging everyone is to say how much they've really enjoyed it so I think you know the church is in good shape there in that it's, it's an encouraging church for whatever um, mm. you know the next people after us or, and, and yourself you know mm. whatever new ventures there are yeah I think also though that um, I've come to see that the church is about relationships and you can put on new services, you can do things to attract people, but in this day and age they're not going to just, just come into the church because of that. Well, a few might, but it's about relationships, I think. It's about, it's about getting to know people in the community and, and, and becoming friends with them and sharing your lives with them. And that's how we're going to take the church forward, I think. Um, I mean, and small groups, things like home groups are very important, I think, in that. Um, yeah, but I think probably for me, relationships, that's probably the key, I think. Yeah, thank you. That's wonderful. Well, how can we pray for you? Um, uh, as I say, uh, sadly, uh, heading off on, uh, it's Tuesday, yeah, six, mm -hmm. six days of Tuesday. But how can we pray for you um, over the time and during during this move and so on well i think well, one thing is that um we don't know where we're going regarding the church um so we pray for us that you know we will find the church to worship and that they don't immediately need a worship leader and a, an organist, an organist. <laughs> oh you never know that might, that might be not... falling mightn't it <laughs> I said to Mark, for goodness sake, don't tell anybody you can play the organ. Oh, no, I, I don't think you'll be. They won't. You won't be able to stop stop him. You'll you'll, you'll just start. You'll just uh, maybe to week two. I can just imagine you kind of turning up and just sort of having a little twiddle, and then suddenly <laughs> there, there you are. <laughs> I also think we're going to have to get used to colder and wetter weather. Uh, coming from the north of England, I remember that very well. So I'm not mm. looking forward to that. So you know. 
prayer that I'll <laughs> manage to get through the snow and the ice and, to, <laughs> and the winters there. Yes. <laughs> well, Pavenham, am I right? Pavenham's one of the driest places in the country uh, or something Probably. like that. It's quite famously dry. Probably, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so you will, you will do that. Oh, wonderful. Well, can I pray for you now? Would that be, uh, would that be uh, good? Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm, there's a sense in which I'm praying on behalf of uh, of everyone who's watching uh, as well. So uh, what we'll what actually what we'll all do, uh, people who are watching this interview, uh, why don't we all kind of pray together, even though there's a time lag? Uh, so so and we'll all kind of say Amen at the end. Okay, yeah, okay. right. Let's do. It. Uh, Father God, we thank you so much for uh, Mark and Judith. Thank you so much for what they mean to us, uh, the gifts that they bring, uh, they brought. Uh, their faith in you, um, but uh, above all, uh, just who they are as people and uh, just their warmth and their willingness to serve uh, in many different ways. And we pray as they make this move, we pray for a safe journey, safe moving, uh, uh, but also as they settle into Bakewell, may they uh, hear your call in many different ways, uh, in relationships um, and also in uh, finding a church community uh, where they will uh, be welcomed, where they will uh, uh, be able to use different gifts, whether it's uh, the same ones that they've covered at the moment or maybe slightly different things. Uh, uh, but ab above all, to just grow in your presence as well. Uh, and we pray for, uh, for Hannah and the family as, as well uh, in uh, Marple and pray that uh, as this new relationship forms, that it will just be uh, just wonderful to uh, for that, that family to be closer together as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Good. Well, thank you so much, uh, everyone. Have a wonderful, safe trip, and uh, and we wish you every blessing. We, <laughs> miss you. we are going to miss everybody. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yes. We're, I, sad. we're excited, is. but we're sad to be going. Yeah, it is a sad so, thing. We'll yeah. miss you, Paul. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, the reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello to you all on February the 14th. I've decided to record today's service with a picture rather than with you seeing me as we've had a bit of problem syncing the mouth movement with the words, which personally I find quite irritating. So I hope this helps. Valentine's Day has been a celebration of romantic love since the 14th century. It was initially inspired by courtly love, where knights declared themselves to their chosen lady by acts of chivalry and adventure. Over time, it has become a day when couples present tokens of love to one another, always assuming they remember, and little children might send cards to their mum. But for many people, today is difficult, a painful reminder of someone they have loved who is no longer with them, no one to cook a special meal for, no one to give them a card or flowers. 
For others, it may not be a beloved spouse, but a great friend or even a child whom they've loved but is now lost. Valentine's Day can also be difficult for people when it emphasises the fact that they have not had a special someone in their life, although they deeply wanted it to be so. Many, if not all of us know, that loving carries a great risk as well as great reward. The risk of rejection, of being let down, disappointed or left alone at a time of great need. But most people will say that, despite what can and sometimes does go wrong, it's usually worth the risk, worth taking the plunge by making a long-term commitment or by getting married. One of the most popular readings for weddings is the one about love from 1 Corinthians, which we heard earlier. However, it was actually written not for a couple in wedded bliss, but to a young church mired in disagreements, debate and diversity. The writer of 1 Corinthians, Paul, was pointing out that the community, despite all its gifts, lacked love and therefore could not function properly together. He pulls no punches, despite the rather poetic presentation of love that he writes about. His intention was to challenge the church at Corinth to get on with it, to step up to the plate and to acknowledge that without love, nothing they did was worth anything. Paul presents this love in terms of what it is not. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil. In other words, love does not hurt people. It doesn't damage the prospects for real community. Love doesn't impede the affirmation of one another's humanity. This love is not passive and fluffy. Loving like this is tough. It's hard to do. Here's the message version of 1 Corinthians 13. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Like I said, this is not fluffy love. This demands commitment and determination with a strong and genuine urge not just to do right by other people, but to put them at the top of our agenda. Reading this in a marriage service at the start of a couple embarking out together is almost setting them up to fail. Surely no one can love like this. God can and did in sending Jesus to show us the way to God and to show what true love is. Love of and through Jesus is the key that opens the gate of heaven. And just because Paul's call to love is challenging and difficult does not mean we shouldn't aim to love in the way he describes. The Holy Spirit is always with us to help us love of God demands. And there is always forgiveness available for the times when we fail. I read this in an online commentary on this passage. Love is the only means by which believers have a chance to live fully in the knowledge and fellowship of God. So on this Valentine's Day which celebrates love, let us consider the way in which we treat not just those whom we actually love, but everyone we know or come into contact with and aim to approach them with this biblical super love that we are called to show to others. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love 
never fails. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Time for our intercessions. The heart is a sign of love. It's central to our physical being our emotional being. It's a sign of the love that we need ourselves, the love we can offer others, and also God's love revealed to the world most fully in Jesus Christ. For our prayers today, when I say, Lord of love, please would you respond in your mercy, hear us. We pray today for the kind-hearted, for people who serve in many different ways, in healthcare, in education, in care homes, but also those who serve in other ways, through driving gritting lorries in the cold, collecting our bins, serving on parish councils, and many other ways. We pray that you will sustain those who serve and give us a renewed heart of service and compassion. Lord of love, in your mercy, hear us. Today on Valentine's Day, we pray for the happy-hearted, we pray for marriages, for relationships, for families, and pray that by your spirit you'll make them places of warmth and love. We also pray for single people. And we pray that our church communities may be places of friendship and warmth and acceptance and love for all. Lord of love, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for the heavy hearted and the broken hearted. We pray for those who are anxious and lonely. We pray for those who are grieving. Help us to be people who bring your love to others and we take a moment to bring before the Lord any known to us particularly at this time. Lord of love, in your mercy hear us. And we join together in saying the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Before we come to our final song, a few things to share. Firstly, a big thanks to Sue for her reflection and to Mark and Judith and Fol and Lulu uh, for being involved in our service and the interview today. Uh, 
This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, it's the start of Lent. Uh, Lent an opportunity of course to, to go deeper with God and perhaps especially at this time uh, it's got a, a particular significance and a particular call to us. Uh, our Ash Wednesday service is taking place via Zoom at 7.30 in the evening and the meeting ID for the, for the Zoom is on your screen now. Uh, it's an opportunity for us together to mark the start of Lent and to prepare ourselves. Uh, and Lent, is, of course, is the build-up, if you like, the way that we prepare ourselves for Easter as well. So please do join us for that, a half-hour reflective service. Also, the Lent Big Read, uh, if you're watching last week, you'll uh, know about that uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, the, uh, the book that we're going to be reading over week by week uh, is Living His Story by Hannah Steele. An opportunity to think about how do we live out our faith in ways that connect with people. Uh, and our first session is on Thursday the 25th. Uh, beginning at 2 p.m. via Zoom again uh, and uh, it's time to maybe start thinking about buying the book and we've got a link underneath this uh, this video on the YouTube video uh, so please do look on that find out more uh, buy the book and uh, also we'll send out some more details a little bit closer on closer to the time uh, for the Zoom meeting. Our final song Christ Alone cornerstone. Every high and storm 
with trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless then before the Well, we're now towards the end of our service. If there's anything that's particularly uh, touched or encouraged you about the service, it would be lovely to uh, hear from you uh, during the week. And a reminder as well about Zoom coffee at 10.30 today, if you're watching this on Sunday. Let's finish with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thanks everybody. See you next time.